see George back in the WNBA, her first season since 2018. She is a post player that has the ability to stretch the floor, played in Australia, was an absolute standout in the Australian League, a superstar. Kayla is one of the best professionals I've been around, especially in her role here. In Australia, she's an MVP. Her approach and the way she just enriches the group, not only with her play when she is put in, but how she talks, how she handles herself, how she interacts with people. She's just a top-notch professional. With what she brings to the game and being a four player that can face up, shoot the three, and defend the post, her game speaks for itself. Kayla gets better and better. She has a lot of confidence in what she can do, and I always say, just be you, because you can offer so many great qualities. She's a great shooter. Back, George, does she have another one? She shivers! The Aussie Olympian with back-to-back -back buckets, and the bench loving it. She wears her pride on her sleeve in reference to how she respects the game and wants to give as much as she can with the game. Comes respected on a lot of levels, definitely from her country. The Aussie love right there. She's a, not just a great basketball player, she's a really kind, uh, authentic person. I think it is what makes her special and um, she works and she's ready when her number is called and at the end of the day that's all you can ask for. She's that player that you can say, I need you to go in and do X, Y, and Z, and no, she's going to carry that out. She feels like she's playing her best basketball and was excited to come here and join the Aces and contribute to this group. It is essential when you play for the Las Vegas Aces, you're going to play the right way. You're going to cut, you're going to move, and you've got to see the court. Kayla George, she is perfect for this team. I was nine when I first started basketball. My mum and dad separated not long after that and it was really challenging for my mum to kind of take me and my sister to all the sports that we played so she kind of made us choose for a little while and I'm really happy that I chose basketball because I'm still here doing the thing. My first goal was just to play in the senior women's team of my local club. I was like, I really want to play for the senior team. I was like 13, 14 at the time and then I got an opportunity with them. I was like, oh my God, this is the best. And then I got a taste for, you know, the Australian stuff with some junior teams and the Opals were obviously the next goal and that became a pretty big focal point for me to want to represent my country. I think everyone wants to play for the green and gold. It's a, you know, it's a, a huge honour. Uh, not everyone gets to go to an Olympic Games or a World Cup. You just put so much energy and effort your whole life. It's one of your biggest goals, if not the biggest goal, to go to an Olympic with the Opals. You have such a, an amazing legacy. They're just great friends and you see that the way that they play and the way they, they interact with each other. So it's something that's been ongoing for years since I was, you know, played for Australia and we, I just kind of continue the legacy that was done before us basically and we do it for each other. It's a sisterhood. Episode three, one, two, three. Kayla George from the right corner. Go. The Opus bench erupts. She wants to get everyone involved, make sure everyone's feeling well. I really wanted to play for the Opals at an Olympics, at a World Cup. Um, I wanted to play in Europe, I wanted to play in the WNBA, and obviously win championships wherever I went, and obviously play in the WNBA. To this day, I've done everything on that list except for win an Olympic medal. You never ever stop wanting to learn and wanting to grow and wanting to better yourself, and leave the game potentially as a triple Olympian would just be beyond my wildest dreams. She's a great leader, but you know, as a leader, there's many different hats, isn't there? So inclusiveness and then accountability and that, and, and Kayla just does it so well because she's got this great humour, but she's got this massive heart too. She wants other people to do well. Sandy, she was um, an incredible coach then and actually um, was probably a massive reason why uh, when I had an opportunity to come to the WNBA the first time I chose to go to Phoenix. Mitchell, nice drive and dish to the cutting Francis, who puts it up and in on the reverse. George for three. This baseline step back, got it. She just opens things up with her ability to shoot that outside shot. Hey X Factor, it's Kayla George here from the Phoenix Mercury. Welcome to Kayla's Corner, episode one. Keep watching. So we have coach Sandy Brondello here. We're just going to ask you a few questions, Sandy. So how do you feel about the season so far? I have to answer that? Uh, yes. <laughs> oh, it was really cool to look back on and, and reflect on my first year as like a really kind of successful um, year to come in and just have a taste. Curry looks for Francis off the baseline, yes. My second year a little tougher. And then the next year I got traded to Connecticut and then I got waived at training camp. 
You know, in your 20s, you like just care so much about what people think and their perception of you, and and that's really challenging because that, on this using this platform that we have, like people come at you from all which way, and so when you're kind of not deflecting it, it's really it can be really debilitating. When I got waived, uh, I got picked up pretty quickly by the Dallas Wings, and I got to spend the season there in 2018, which is really cool. There was Liz there, they had Aaron Phillips there, the coach, so that was really great. The Dallas Wings are going to the playoffs for the second year in a row. And then I came back to Dallas in 2019. And I got waived after camp, and I went to a complete hole. I was, oh, I get the emotional thing about it. Um, my self worth really flattened. I um, thought about retiring. Like, mind you, forgetting that it's the best league in the world, so obviously, like, it's okay, you're gonna be alright, kid, like. But I certainly just, like, hid from the world for a little while, for like a month. I didn't wanna leave my house unless I was walking my dogs. It took me a second to bounce back from that and it left a bit of a funky taste in my mouth for just in that moment um, and my experience there so I just had to bounce back really quickly because I still had stuff to do on my goal list with the national team, I was playing in the WNBL, still wanted to win you know, some more championships in the WNBL in Australia. That's the hard thing about this league and why a lot of players don't make it because it's not necessarily about physical skill set, capabilities. It's a lot of mental, and to be a mainstay on your national team, to, you know, play it at the highest levels, to be in this league, and, you know, be a role player. Kayla George says, not in my house. That's a hard adjustment to make. And for Kayla, like, she's just a selfless human. Double team opens George, Magbagor, and one. She reminds herself, like, hey, I know who I am. I chose and accepted this role. It doesn't define who I am as a player. George has a good look for three, and she's got 37, Kayla G. George, top of the arc, she'll turn and fire herself. Kayla George, another triple. I think if I was to give any Aussie or anyone advice on the WNBA, it's like, just make sure you're mentally like super resilient because it can really take you on a journey if you're not careful. And I am so determined to never be that low and I'm so much more convicted with my self-worth as I've gotten older.